At this place in history, we're on Powell Street in Richford with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, we're here this week because of something that used to be located right here that an awful lot of people in our region probably have no idea ever existed. Yeah, very true, Mike. And, you know, something of, of national significance right. to the United States and somewhat to Canada as well. Um, and we are standing on the site of what was a Chinese detention center. Um, and it was here from uh, about 1903 to 1913. So for about a decade, this was one of only four detention centers along the entire land border with Canada. One of the two U.S. presidents to have been born in Vermont had a very significant role in this facility having been built here. <laughs> Absolutely, Mike. So Chester Arthur, um, the year specifically was 1882. Um, the United States Congress passed and he signed into law the Chinese Exclusion Act. And so this is the first and really only time in U.S. history where we've said to one group of people, based on your country of origin, we're completely excluding you, that excluded all Chinese immigration to the United States for a term of 10 years. That was the compromise, and that's why Chester Arthur signed it, because it was a term of only 10 years. It was renewed in 1892, and then in 1902, it was made permanent. Right. Not very long after that is when this detention center would have been Exactly. Built. So then you had to have processing facilities to try to uh, catch and um, send back Chinese immigrants. And a lot of Chinese were trying to come here. Chinese would, would enter Canada, take the Canadian Pacific Railway all the way over here. Richford was one of the busiest border crossings, uh, if not the busiest, in uh, New England at the time. Um, and so it made sense to have a detention facility here. The big immigration ports of San Francisco and New York and Los Angeles, for example, um, all had processing facilities. And ultimately that's what happened here um, and decided at that point to move all Chinese immigration processing to Boston. And then in 1924, it got expanded even more and they started applying quotas to different other countries and then started taking rights away from Chinese who were already uh, in the country. And it wasn't until 1943 uh, with World War II well underway when China became our ally that the legislature, Congress said, well, well, maybe we should rethink this. Yeah. So they put a quota of 105 Chinese immigrants a year. Of course, all of this was wiped out in 1964, and we got rid of country-by-country country quotas. The Richford Historical Society has some documentation, including a photograph of uh, an interpreter who worked there, if they, I'm remembering they that did. right. They did, yeah. They in, in, uh, employed uh, Hong Poi, who was uh, an interpreter, to uh, work with the folks as they came through, and they have a a picture of him at the Historical Society, and also it's it, you know it's it's a grainy image, but an image of the Chinese Detention Center with some Chinese nationals um, standing uh, outside of it. So documentation is few and far between, um, but I think it's an important story for us to tell. A story of U.S. immigration policy at this place in history.